Get all the calls. Oh, they, they, they just walked so and so to Jim Crotch. So, so, so. Great. 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 Jim Burke is on his way up there. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, she's all set. All right, we'll call this regular monthly meeting to order for the Scarborough Sanitary District on <coughs> excuse me, Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. We'll do a roll call. We'll start with Ruth. Present. Tony. Present. Mike. Present. And I'm next. So, Chairman, I'm present too. Uh, approval of the minutes from the regular monthly meeting in April. I entertain a motion. You were not here. Thank you, Mike. You can still second it. Oh, you yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can. You can not. You just can't vote on it. Right. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I guess all in favor of the minutes would be. You do. No, you can't vote. You can't vote. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't get excited. <laughs> Okay, superintendent's report. We're ready, Dave. Okay. All right. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of April is included in your packet. Uh, our average effluent flow is 2.04 million gallons per day. Our effluent uh, quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% BOD removal and 97% TSS removal for the month. With average effluent concentrations of 10 and 4. Uh, a copy of the pump station flows for the month of April is included in your packet. Uh, pump station 17 or Gorham Road. Uh, the Hydro Ranger. Uh, which reports the flow data failed and was replaced, uh, which accounts for the erroneous data's data on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. The Hydro Ranger only reports flow during that time. That's, uh, the station ran with no issues. Um, we reached out to our HR consultant with regards to our annual audit and the accounting of the Health Trust for GASB 30, uh, 75. Uh, Betsy was unfamiliar with GABSB uh, 75, uh, so we reached out to the Maine Municipal Employees Health Trust, and Christy Gould from the trust provided the following. As per our discussion this morning, this email is to provide you with some basic information about GASB 75 regulations and how the implicit liability created by your participation in the trust impacts the district's financials. In 2018, the Government Accounting Standards Board, or GASB, issued revised regulations which impact all employer groups who are subject to, to GASB and provide medical coverage through the Maine Municipal Employee Health Trust. Under these regu regulations, an implicit liability is created due to your participation in the trust as a pool. While you may not contribute directly towards the retiree health premiums, and most groups do not, and we do not, uh, all eligible members have the option of electing uh, continuing health coverage as a retiree, and this creates an implicit liability. It does not obligate your organization to pay any direct retiree health costs that you must book as a liability, and is typically stated as a footnote in your financials. The Board of Trustees recognized that these regulations would create it would be complex for members to comply with. Therefore, we contracted with the trust actuary, Sharon, to prepare an annual implicit valuation reports, which are provided by the MMEHT at no additional cost. More information about GASB 75 in the reports, including a helpful presentation provided by the actuary, is available on the Health Trust website, and they provide the um, 
the link to that. Uh, and that is the end of her email. Um, I have included a copy of the reference annual implicit valuation report. And I guess at this point, I'd just let me know how you, if you still want that workshop and who would you like at that workshop and you know, I'll make it happen. So, um, do, let's see. Next item is SL Environmental Law Group. I met with the SL Environmental Law Group oh, who's looking into legal options for PFAS recovery. I did provide, I think everybody, maybe there might be one short down there. No, I think I got it. Uh, you got it. Um, I did provide a handout that they just provided to me uh, with regards to what they do with regards to a um, uh, class action lawsuit with regards to PFAS and who their current clients here in Maine are. Um, so far, they've had uh, Brunswick Tops and Water District, City of Bangor, uh, Kennebec Water District, Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port and Wells Water District, Portland Water District, Sanford Water District, South Berwick Water District, and York Sewer District. So um, they're looking for the Sanitary District to sign on board with them and uh, um, be a part of this uh, class action lawsuit. They obviously think it'd be worthwhile if it's up to the trustees for me to continue that discussion, I will, or suspend it at any point in time. Uh, do we want to talk about these things or wait until I get to the uh, end? That's up to you. I, uh, if you want to keep going or you want to just cover let, this now. Let's back up to the Maine Employee right. Health Trust. Maine Employee Health Trust. It's part Thank of you. the superintendent's report. Any Probably questions? Go. Yeah. Any questions on that for the superintendent? Or do you want to provide some guidance about workshops? I think, Joe, you had the question originally. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, just because, you know, after our financial report and we were nearing that liability question, right, that's why I suggested uh, perhaps we get with Betsy and, and uh, discuss our HR involvement. Um, I'm comfortable with what the Maine Employee Health Trust has given us for guidance. Um, based on that. Uh, I, I think I'd like to punt that over to Willett and Associates for their interpretation of that. Um, I don't uh, see um, an issue with us still continuing the workshop just to recover, just to encapsulate where we're at with Betsy and benefits and so on and so forth. Um, but it, I don't find it nearly as pressing as I did last month. Okay. So, Just for point of um, clarification, clarification the how many employees are taking part in this benefit it, as with, retirees? Within the sanitary, Scarborough yes, sanitary? Scarborough. None. None, okay. None currently. None currently, and none that I know of in the past. None in the past. Yeah. Right. I don't, okay. I don't know. okay. Cool. So, so I'm comfortable based on that understanding of liability. Um, moving forward, just as we were, um, I guess I wouldn't mind us, like I said, uh, getting Willett and Associates just to weigh in on that. It, it all makes sense. Um, and that's kind of what I thought it would be. But it seemed a little bit more of a red flag when we went over our audit with them. So I'd kind of like to hear from Willett and Associates to see if, if on the other side of the coin, they also don't view it as really true a liability. And then also to kind of I mean, nothing pressing for a workshop with her, you know, maybe, you know, sometime this fall, just to review benefits as we prepare for the next fiscal budget and so on and so forth. Okay. Cool. And the next one. The next was one was SL, SL Environmental, Environmental Law Group in this so. class action lawsuit that um, they so want us to 
become a part of. I know uh, Wells Sanitary District was also approached, and their board actually chose not to move. Not to move forward with the at this time. Um, point of clarification: PFAS is polyfluoro something or other. That Alcohol substances. That, that clarified PFAS. that. Yes, of course it did. <laughs> um, you know did this. Yes, yes so go ahead, Tony. The class action suit is it for recovery in case it's mandated that you have to treat PFAS? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's a suit to move forward to re for us to recover our additional cost, whatever they are, as a result of PFAS in wastewater, whether it's um, increased sludge disposal costs or a treatment option. I was under the impression that we could recover costs we've already spent on the legislation due to PFAS. And that may be true, and, too. And I think I, it's for all costs in the past, currently, and in the future, you know, up to a certain point. What happened is this environmental law group put together a consortium of water districts and, and cities that take care of water. And it's been a seven-year process, but they finally have made a settlement with the, the defendants for the water side of the house. Now they're starting to do the wastewater side of the house. Well, in a lot of ways, you guys have no control over that big bucket, right? It comes into the wastewater, right, from locations that you have to accept. Yeah, the, none I'm, whatsoever. Yeah, we don't have control. We have no control over it. It's just, so I, I can continue these conversations. I don't see any harm in continuing these conversations at this point in time. And so Me neither. We're interested in I mean, can anyone, does anyone have any reservations in joining this? No, so my, my position on it was going to be that uh, I think it's beneficial for us to be in the meetings to keep, keep the information and understand that. Um, there's no harm in that aspect of it. I mean, obviously, there's nothing that we're doing in our processes that are creating the PFAS. The PFAS is coming from what we're uh, processing. Um, but I would rather have the information coming out of these meetings at first hand rather than be a reactive later on. So I would encourage, you know, as long as you can, you know, as long as you don't object to find the time to still participate. What I would like to do then is also reach out to our uh, uh, council and just run by any things that need to be concerned of or move forward with that they may want us to to um, take into consideration as we move forward. I think that's a great idea. Okay. You know, I yeah, would, I would uh, say run by the council, and obviously I'm going to guess that they're going to recommend you not to testify in any of these meetings, but just <laughs> to sit there and listen. Um, and I think that's a, probably a good starting point. One of the reasons that my board didn't jump on board immediately, you know, because at that time when they pre were presented the idea, York Sewer District was the only wastewater um, district that had signed on. Their major concern is the distraction of a lawsuit because it isn't just set it, forget it, yeah, we joined up. The nature of determining what the costs are going to be are going to take up a lot of time, engineering time, Dave's time, and the attorney's time. So that's, I didn't see a downside till that was pointed out to me. Yeah, and I don't disagree with that standpoint because let's, let's face it, uh, if there's going to be litigation for monies afterwards, I mean, it's all public record of whatever our compost was. So, but uh, for Dave to participate, as attending the meetings and understanding what's going on, um, I think is valuable for the group. Okay. Cool. Continuing right. on Continuing with my report on. then. Insurance renewal, I believe, yep. is next. Yep. Uh, we are working with our agent, Clark Insurance, on our annual increase, um, our annual insurance renewal. Currently, our current carrier has identified two exclusions, one related to PFAS, and the other regarding an exclusion for flood insurance for the Higgins Beach pump station. 
have a meeting with Clark on the 6th. Um, frankly, I, with the work that we're going to be doing at Higgins Beach, I think it's irrelevant that they're not going to come included under our flood insurance. Um, this district's new website is now up and running. I, I hope Mr. Sign was able to take a look. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of our local communities conducted the following sewer rate comparison as shown in the table. At $36.33 per month, Scarborough is the second lowest of the 19 communities surveyed. And just a little over half of overall, uh, half of the overall average cost of $63.60. So just for uh, the range actually went from $35 a month for sewer with a high, uh, the low of $35 a month with a high of $116.55 per month. Um, okay, Matt. Yeah. I just want to point out that you know, that, that is really amazing considering the amount of volume we do in comparison to some of these smaller districts to keep our costs that low. Thank you. Um, currently we have two, well, actually three. I got one more applicant. Three strong candidates that have applied for the, uh, the chief plant operator position. Um, and... We'll be conducting interviews um, next week, um, and we'll keep the position open until we find the right right person for it. And we won't limit it to these three. If none of them fit our needs, we will continue looking. I'll be on a family vacation to France from June 12th to July 1st. Uh, Carl Tucker will be the primary contact person at the plant during my absence, and Nick here has uh, uh, graciously offered to drop by at least once a week to check on things and uh, touch bases with the staff. Um, with that, due to the vacancy of the chief plan operator position, you know, uh, there will be no June regular monthly meeting unless we, um, uh, Nick or Ben, would like to run the meeting. Who's running the plant right now? Um, Scott. Scott and myself, and, but Scott's the primary. He, he's the the uh, what I, I identify him as the lead operator. Ken provides a lot of the the laboratory data, and uh, Scott is um, a very well uh, qualified person for that. You have the I do well. I yes and no. <laughs> I have, I'm licensed in Massachusetts as a grade five in Maine because I hold a professional engineering license. I do not need a operator's license. Um, so June meeting, yeah. So yeah, we will not have time. a we will not have a June meeting. Any questions on the rest of the superintendent's report? Comments. Okay, I guess not. So we'll move on. Um, no, uh, how about correspondence? No, none. None on old business as well. So the next one in line is 7A, Casella. Casella Organics. Um, who is being represented by an Evan Kelly here from the Granite State? Was it the, no, or no, Pine, what? New Hampshire, okay. Yes, please and go up, introduce yourself, oh, though Dave already did. <laughs> they can share. Thank you. So, so for, the, for the public's uh, information, we contract with Casella Organics to dispose of our sludge. Um, they're responsible for the hauling of the sludge from the plant and the landfilling of, of it. And, uh, uh, typically, we dispose of uh, about 30 tons of sludge every four days. So trailer dump leaves the plant every four days. How many per year? How many tons? Do you know? Divide four into 365. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know that. the math. I just it's put like, my calculator away. It's, it's about 300 tons of sludge. Think, All right. Thank like you. All right. You're up, Evan. Sure. So in... 
I guess it was uh, early May. Sure. So uh, early May, we sent out um, some probably uh, cryptic messages to a lot of our uh, <laughs> customers saying that there's big news to share about biosolids management. And uh, so I'm here today to elaborate more on that message. Uh, so in January, a company called Veridi has purchased the old Brunswick Landing um, digester that used to be run by Village Green. So the news there is that Veridi and Casella are in a partnership and once the digester has uh, done all the engineering evaluations and we've removed all the residuals that are currently there, there's going to be some additional capacity to bring biosolids in the state of Maine to this digester. Uh, the hope is that the digester will be up and running by 2026 and there will be an additional probably 80,000 tons, wet tons, of capacity for sludge. So all of this is coming at a, a pretty critical time in Maine. As we've seen the last few years, biosolids management has been difficult. Uh, a couple of pieces of legislation that uh, led to this difficulty was the LD 1911, which banned the land application and beneficial use of biosolids in Maine due to PFAS. And we also uh, had the legislative uh, bill that was uh, LD 1639 that limited the amount of bulky waste going to the landfill that we used to mix with the sludge. So we had all this sludge coming into the landfill, not as much uh, trash to, to mix with the sludge. So we're hoping in a couple of years that we're going to have greater capacity um, for the state and for all of our, our member communities that we're currently servicing now. So that's sort of the, the news that we wanted to share. Uh, there's sort of a light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited to share the news with, with everybody. Sure. Can I ask a few questions? Yeah, go for it. Um, the di digester, I assume it's going to help in the regards that it's going to reduce the volume, yes. overall volume of the sludge, similar to what uh, any other, any type of digesting process. Um, but that digested sludge will then be disposed of in the landfill, still in the landfill? Potentially. So I think initially it will be. Our, our goal is to take that 80, 85,000 uh, wet tons. It's going to be digested down to around 10,000 wet tons. So it's, it's a volumetric measure in which we're trying to take volume out of the landfill to increase the longevity of that, that facility. We can't take that digestate and beneficially use it in Maine. And so we would have to dispose of it, or we can transport that outside the state. And if it has all the right characteristics to meet you know, the biosolids regulations in New Hampshire or Massachusetts or something, then we could opt to bring the digestate there. Yeah. So initially, uh, you know, bef before we get the approvals to do that, it, it would be digested. I think that our goal in the hierarchy of managing biosolids and sludge would be to find a higher use for it. And you'll be accepting, accepting dewatered sludge? Uh, so dewatered sludge cake, yeah. We, I don't yep. think that we would do liquid sludge. Uh, I think the, the sweet spot for the digester would probably be somewhere, well, the typical uh, dewatered cake. So somewhere between, you know, 15 to 28, 30% solids. Yep, so Veridi uh, RNGs, they're going to be operating the facility. So Veridi is the company that's going to operate the facility. Casella's component in that relationship is just procuring the biosolids to feed into the facility. So they're going to be running that facility. All of the energy that's created is going to be going to the commercial and industrial park that's there. Uh, and then they can obviously sell that as, as energy. Yeah. Uh, it off. I'm sorry. I thought I had it on. Um, the, is there an economical um, advantage for now taking the sludge? Is there any incentive for the districts to bring that sludge to them? Um, because, I mean, obviously, before it was landfilled, now it's being generated, but I'm sure some of those costs are paying for the, the digester construction. But is there any benefit at all? 
Do you say, is there any benefit for you know, towns and municipalities yeah. to bring their sludge there as yeah. opposed to the landfill? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I would suppose, that, or I would guess, that all of the, the credits for producing that energy is something that Verity would hold on to. Sure. Um, so I'm not sure there's any direct benefit in, in terms of that sense. It's just another, there, another place to put the sludge, right? So it could be another place that, you know, there could also be the conversation that, you know, towns or municipalities could have to say that their sludge is still continuing to be reused um, instead of disposed of. So okay. again, finding another purpose for the a Thank wasted you. material. Appreciate that. Sure. So you don't expect, I mean, because right now, Casella, we contract for a sludge disposal. You don't ex or you may not be able to speak to right now, a cost benefit for us for participating in this program per se. Yeah, it's a good question and it's on the, the top of everyone's mind, right? Uh, if we have all this extra capacity, where, where, where the costs go? Um, I would say when the facility just opens, I'm not sure that cost savings is gonna be immediately realized. Uh, it's probably going to be a bit of time so that we understand and, and we're able to tinker with that system. So that, that 80,000 is really probably our stretch goal. That's where we want to be. Um, it might take some time to ramp up to that full capacity. So we might not actually see that the, the rates change immediately. I think ultimately our goal is there's not as much demand on the facilities that we use to either recycle or dispose of sludge. And if there's not that much demand, um, you know, hopefully we see the rates go in the opposite direction than where they have been going. One last question. Uh, sure. From a numbers perspective, does this, is there like a building this facility, does it give you a volume of um, sludge that can, it can handle versus what was being taken up to the landfill? Is it half of what normally went up to the landfill? Is it, do we know? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably have to do the, <laughs> some quick math. I was just, I was just curious about that. Um, I don't know what the, the most recent numbers are, and this, so this might be high. Um, but I think we're somewhere around 200 tons, wet tons of sludge going into the landfill. And again, that, might, that number might be high. So we might be looking at 50,000 wet tons going to the landfill. Uh, so if this facility can do 80, it would be a bit, bit more than that. But again, don't maybe quote me on all those sure. numbers, but it, that That's might good be some day. rough math. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, as a... You know, the landfill, that, that's a finite resource, right? We're hoping with the digester, we can sure. be able to do that um, annually, right? Sure. We're not gonna be limited and maybe we're closing one cell, we, we have to limit the amount of uh, sludge coming in, right? We don't want that much wet waste. So we're hoping this is gonna be a, a consistent outlet for us. Great idea. And, and their communities. Yeah. I could uh, pause you for a moment. Sure. Uh, Dave, I mean, as far as our district goes, I mean, we contract with Casella now for our waste disposal. So, I mean, what is necessarily impact for us? Uh, I mean, we're, our contract is renewed every five years. So, every three, every three years. Every three um, and the so hopefully this will help take a lot of the load off of the the landfill and the vent. You know help drive the price down, so. Logistically, okay, we, uh, as part of a group, Southern Maine Biosolids Group, those contracts are up at the end of June, I believe. Yep. Right. After that. Uh, so I believe it's for the Southern Maine Group, I think it's June of 25. It is, okay. Yeah, so there, there's a couple of things that's, you know, the, <laughs> on the table to impact biosolids management. Uh, one of those is the, the latter bill that I described was the LD1639 that limited the amount of bulky waste going to the landfill. That's been uh, essentially set on pause for two years by LD718. So July 2025, that pause stops. So that means that we may have uh, again, a shortage of material going into the landfill, uh, which means we may have to diversify where, where sludge goes. Um, we're trying to procure additional oversized bulky waste. Um, we're, we're trying to really figure out a solution for that. Again, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be more discussions in the legislature as we lead up to this uh, uh, July 2025 date. So in terms of what we're able to do for contracts moving forward, so 
after um, all of those, I guess, conclude at the end of June of 2025, we're going to be putting <laughs> an article into our agreement that will contemplate um, disposal or recycling at the Village Green facility when it comes, or <laughs> the Village Green, the Brunswick Landing facility once that comes online. Again, that's um, it's probably something that we're going to have to iron out in terms of um, what we can do in terms of rates going to that facility. And this is all very early stages. Don't have too many answers in, in the way of that, but there should be a provision in agreements moving forward, whether in an amendment or a new agreement that contemplates recycling at that facility. And when you say procurement of our sludge, does that mean you're going to buy it from us? <laughs> well, I, I guess I meant we're going to... Yeah, well, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Procurement of space. That <laughs> right, uh, right. The, we buy it. Procure, we, we procure space either in the landfill or in the digester. Yeah. And Veridi's timeline for getting the digester online is? Spring of 2026. And again, the, all of the checks and engineering stuff is happening now. The previous company, the company that Veridi purchased the, the site from uh, in Verdale, um, they still have a residuals in, in some of those tanks that we're cleaning out. So we have to clean those tanks out, get the site up to, up to snuff, and then we're going to have a better idea, a clearer idea. We're hoping spring of 2026. Be sooner, could be later. One last question. It, since any thoughts about since it's already digested sludge, I know Maine has kind of restrictive air air quality restrictions. Um, what about incinerating that sludge after digestion? So, is everything I know about incineration in Maine is essentially not not going to happen. Okay. Um, the air permits and, and that kind of process is is really and prohibitive. They've been pretty strict about that. Yeah. No, but you could send it to Ohio. They'll so, take it. Yeah, North Carolina will take it too. <laughs> we could potentially send it down to you know. There's there's a number of incinerators in Connecticut and in Rhode yeah. Island. Yeah. Um, all those incinerators were built in, in the 1970s, and the, the infrastructure is uh, n not as reliable. I would say uh, they're quite frequently down for maintenance, and I think we'd have a better solution just digesting the sludge and trying gotcha. to beneficially use it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and just as another point, again, this is a, a volumetric measure. Um, we mentioned PFAS earlier in this, uh, this meeting. That this won't um, really affect uh, PFAS concentrations. There might be some uh, transitions to one compound to another. Um, I, I don't think that there's going to be any destruction through this process. It's more of a, a volume uh, attempt that we're trying to reduce volume. Now, when LD1639 kicked in, you guys started sending sludge up to New Brunswick. Yes. In yeah, June 2025, oh, our contracts are up. Oh, LD 1639 kicks in again. Yep. Going to send it back to New Brunswick? Uh, if nothing changes, uh, that's well, on the, the table. Well, the spring 2026 of the Digest Online, there's a whole year. Yep. So yeah. As a, another initiative of what Casella is trying to do is source oversized bulky waste within the state of Maine. So what, what happened with LD 1639 is a, a lot of that bulky waste was coming from Massachusetts to our recycling facility, getting recycled, and then we were bringing that recycled waste to the landfill. Uh, and the state of Maine said that that's more of a loophole. We only want Maine waste in the landfill. Uh, so we're trying to procure additional sources of bulky waste so that we can use that if LD 1639 comes back into effect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At one point, I thought I saw a correspondence from Casella looking for a potential commitment, a 10-year contract commitment to send it to Brunswick Landing. Is that what your ultimate goal is? A 10-year commitment to send biosolids to yes. Brunswick Landing Digester? Yeah. I have not seen that. 10-year commitment feels long. Because <laughs> that's not something that we as a board would recommend. That's too long-term, too many yeah, I, Again, that, that's not something I've seen or, or even heard of. Okay. No. Good to know. I think that we would try to match that up with any of our residual management agreements. So if, typically those are a three-year um, for certain... Certain folks, they're a bit longer, five-year. Um, but that's usually if we have to procure equipment that's specialized um, 
So if we have to take a, a larger a roll off container, maybe cut the walls out, right? There's some additional work we wanna be able to use that asset for. We have longer agreements for, for those types of work, but usually it's it's always kind of three years, two or three years. Is your Hawk Ridge compost facility still active? It is still active, yes. So we're using the Hawk Ridge compost facility to compost out of state sludge. So Maine's taken the stance that they don't want any Maine sludge recycled so we're not recycling any main sludge there. So we're composting sludge from New Hampshire and Massachusetts and shipping it back down there. Hmm. Interesting. Any more questions for Evan? Just, I, I just this is a question, this is a comment. You, you mentioned the incinerators down in Connecticut and being built that back in the 70s when uh, we ran into the, in, we were shut off from the landfill as a result of L, uh, the various legislations coming to a head. Uh, I had reached out to a lot of those facilities and a lot of them are not e uh, designed to take dewatered sludge, nor did they even want, even if they were, they weren't available for us to dispose of sludge down there. I think the one of the closest places I found that would take sludge was in South Carolina. <laughs> so, yeah, there's you know the incinerator down in uh, Cranston, Rhode Island. It's oh. uh, basically all liquid sludge. So you're talking to three percent solids, not the dewatered sludge cake that's you know fifteen to twenty five percent solids. Uh, a lot of the incinerators there are basically at capacity. Um, they're they're full. So yeah, and, and whenever there is sort of a hiccup or a shutdown, they do maintenance, they're, they're off unexpectedly. It, it really creates a ripple in, in the sludge industry. You mentioned the 3% solids, and I th my recollection was I did that calculation. If we switched from dewater, hauling dewatered sludge versus hauling liquid sludge, there would be, I, I want to say there was three or four tanker trucks leaving our plant a day. Wow. So, it, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't tangible. Cost effective. Yeah, so. it, there's, speaking about liquid sludge, the amount of outlets for liquid sludge may be even fewer than uh, sludge cake. <laughs> so there's, there's just not that, that many outlets for it. Uh, we also have built up um, a rail facility in site in our landfill in Pennsylvania. Uh, maybe there's a rail opportunity uh, coming down the pipeline as well. More on that a bit later. I appreciate the information. Yeah, thank the, you. It's good to see a, a potential in-state solution that hopefully will not be New Brunswick and help uh, our future negotiations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know, uh, you know, folks like uh, Scott Furman at the Portland Water District, they, presented uh, their analyses if they were going to build a facility and you know, kind of a merchant facility for sludges and, um, you know, just a return on investment, what the cost would be to bring a sludge into that facility was somewhere around $350 a ton. Uh, so in ways, you know, this, this is also a message of we're, we're trying to do this on the private side um, so that maybe, you know, the public doesn't have to. Uh, if we can build up enough capacity and it's reliable, you know, we don't have to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars to figure it out. You, you mentioned the Portland Water District and, and they did do conduct a study with regard to a regional facility for addressing PFAS here in the state. Um, and, you know, the, you know it, it just seems um, logistically locating it in the Portland area uh, is the best and they, they did they have uh, run some of the numbers, and it uh, the number you know was in the three hundred to three hundred fifty dollars a ton disposal cost. For, I think we're paying one hundred and fifty dollars a ton or thereabouts right now. Uh, oh, the so districts are paying upwards of two to two fifty a ton. Yeah, thank you. Very a much. lot of folks that are hauling the material in roll offs, which is a completely uh, yeah the calculus we have, changes. We have a trailer dump, which really helps our disposal costs. Um, 
you know, so they're looking at funding options to try to drive that price down to that $150 per ton number, which would be um, competitive to what we're paying right now. So there's a couple things go going on, um, but, the, and so, but the Portland Water District is working hard on this issue because the reality of it is they're, they're probably, what, 50, 60% of the sludge, dewatered sludge in the state of Maine, so. Yeah, yeah, they're a large portion. <laughs> Kudos to them. Okay. Uh, thank you, Evan. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. You do All not right. have to stay. No. <laughs> You're more than welcome to do so, though. Um, okay. The next up is... Do you want to... Take B and C out of order just because C might take a little longer. What's that? You want to move pump station 28 up in order? I'll, I'll entertain a motion, Joe, if you want to do that. I'd like to move B to C That's and C to, to B. Do we have a second? I second. second. Tony's got a second. Any questions, discussion? All in favor? Uh, Ruth opposed, or are you with us? No. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay. He's tired. <laughs> All right, I guess we're up with Pump Station 28. Go ahead, Dave. All right. Uh, on behalf of Cross Hold Holdings, LLC, Goral Palmer requested the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approval of the proposed pump station in Force, Maine, which will service the town center area in the Downs. The town center phase two area was originally designed for sewer conveyance via a deep gravity sewer um, to pump station 27, which is already uh, up and running. Uh, during the construction of phase one gravity mains, the presence of soft uh, liquefied clay was encountered, making construction difficult and leading to the potential for long-term settlement of the, sewer, of, of the sewer in that area. Therefore, the initial main was uh, vertically risen to, to ensure constructability and uh, limit post-construction settlement of the main. In review of this change and discussions, it was determined that a second pump station for the town center area, pump station number 28, would be necessary. Ultimately, this pump station was, will discharge into a gravity manhole that will flow to pump station 27. The force main and pump station will be transferred over to the district upon completion of the project. I pro I propose um, the proposed project includes uh, one new, not flooded, submersible um, pump station. Sorry about that. Eight foot diameter wet well. Um, Two 10 horsepower submersible pumps with an average flow of 142 gallons per day with a peak design flow of 609, uh, 661,000 gallons per day. Uh, the flow, pump flow ranges are going to be from 230 to 460 GPM. They will be variable speed uh, with a total uh, dynamic head of 29 to 50 TDH feet ahead. Uh, include an emergency generator, scary controls, mag magnetic flow meter, radio uh, communication, and control building, very similar to what has been already built at the two previous pump stations, pump station 26 and 27. Uh, there will be a six inch diameter HDPE force main of approximately 1300. Uh, linear feet. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Final plans will sh uh, shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to construction. A sewer extension permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to being executed, no sewer work will be completed. Provide up updated plans to the superintendent that satisfactorily address uh, the peer review comments and the costs associated with the engineering peer review will be paid by the developer. I'll entertain a motion. I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Tony. 
I, I think it. You uh, motioning this? I am. He just okay. raised his hand. Yeah. Do we have a second? Thank you, Joe. Now We're we can discuss you. it. Go ahead, Tony. You That's think true. It's a great no, idea. discussion. Now you can discuss. <laughs> um, why don't we introduce our speaker? Oh, he can just follow up with more details on um, the pump station that's needed. Can you introduce yourself, please, on camera? I am Trevor Gettig. Uh, I work at Gold Palmer. Um, I'm, on he I'm here on behalf of Drew Gagnon. Um, so I'll do my best to answer your questions tonight. He, uh, he uh, won the ASC Young Engineer of Maine Award. Um, so he's receiving that tonight. Um, so I'm here. Um, as Dave said, um, this is located you know, in the Downs. Um, we're looking over here in this little area. Um, this is all the approved and completed um, sewer work that we have uh, done this far uh, at Scarborough Downs. Um, I'm upside down. There you go. Uh, this, this graphic will uh, help you kind of grasp everything that he just said uh, in words. Um, this pump station is going to be collecting area from the yellow um, and conveying it down to a uh, terminus main hole that has been left in town center area um, in the green uh, hatched area, which uh, goes to pump station 27. Originally, uh, this area was supposed to be all getting sent to pump station 27. However, as you mentioned, due to the existing conditions of the downs, we had to raise the sewer and therefore, without raising the entire site, we need to add a, uh, another pump station. Um, so the flows were previously handled. We have not really adjusted the flows any uh, different. We have, um, as he said, uh, about 142,000 uh, gallons per day average and uh, 660,000 uh, gallons per day peak uh, going to this pump station 28, which will be sent through the six inch uh, force main back to pump station 27, um, where again, that flow has already been accounted for, but we're essentially moving some of this old pump station 27 uh, land to this new pump station 28. Um, it's, uh, as he mentioned, an eight, eight foot uh, wet well uh, with, with a submersible 10 horsepower uh, smart pump uh, that has internal VFDs. Um, that we also have included, and I brought the plans for us to also look at, um, we have included VFDs remaining on the wall um, if the pump were to ever change in the future. We are working with Dave um, in the meantime right now to kind of adjust the building a little bit, but this is a rough plan that we have so far. Um, and our site overall is pretty, pretty tiny area. It's just a, a tiny lot at, at the top of, uh, on the top of town center on Downs Road. Um, and construction is anticipated to hopefully be at the end of this year, early next year. Um, and Let's talk about anything else you guys have comments and questions for. I, like I said, I'll do my best um, to answer, but we are we still working with Dave and trying to um, iron out a couple of the building details, but for the most part, our design is complete. Cool. Any questions for Trevor? I, I do. Go ahead, Tom. So, if I'm right, these are integral VFDs, right? You are putting additional VFDs in the building, is that correct? Or provisions for it? Provisions for yeah. okay, great. Yeah, these are a new. I know I've seen them. A uh, new new pump that's being uh, that's been out for a, number, a couple of years now. That flight has designed that has uh, it's not truly a VFD. I they kind of hush hush on a little specifics on the internals, but um, you know we met with flight on a couple of occasions already. Uh, Carl and I at and. Uh, went over the details of it. Um, we thought, you know, being 10 horsepower, it's not, it's a, it's a, it, you know, they seem like a good good system. And at 10 horsepower, it seems like a something that is very reasonable to give them a try. So, wanna be a little progressive and try new things. 
great. It's a, it's a great <laughs> idea. I do have a couple of questions. So originally that flow was going to the station 27, correct? Correct. Yeah. And so what happens to the capacity and uh, efficiency and the volume in that wet well? Because oh, it, it was anticipating that flow was going to go there. It's still going to 27. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, it's being pumped to 27. Yeah. It's still going to 27. Okay. It's just because we had to raise the sewer. Gotcha. Or they had to raise the okay. sewer. Um, they had to get it no, there. It's a, it's a great way. idea. It's definitely a great idea. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Trevor? I, I do have one question. I don't know if Trevor can answer this. It might be a question for Dave. Is this the last pump station? Is pump station 28 the last pump station in Scarborough Downs, or are there going to be additional? Well, before we ran into the sewer issue, <laughs> <laughs> at 20, in front of 27, 27 was the last yeah. pump station. So uh, in theory, yes. So how many pump stations do we have in Scarborough Downs? Three. Well, this will be the third one. Okay. There's one up here, then 27, and now it would be 28. So one services the um, uh, the innovation district. The other one, well, 27 actually serves the majority. 26 pumps to 27, as well 28. So. Just quick question: Can you just point on the map which direction Route One is? And which direction Pain Road is? Maintenance is here, Pain Road is along the side, and then Route 1 is down here. So you're looking aerial, sort of plan north, plan okay. and view north. Thank you. For this, this pump station is the yellow area, yep. Any more questions for Trevor? You did a yeoman's job. Thank you, Trevor. Now, without any more discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Drew owes you. I, I tried to make the pitch. It's, I, uh, I actually flew back in from Ohio last night. At, uh, I landed in Portland at 2.30, so. Uh, not intending to be working, and here I am. So, <laughs> thanks for taking the hit for the team. I, I will. I have already told him that he owes me, so we're, we're ahead on that one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, uh, next item of business would be Verizon Wireless now. Verizon Wireless um, just recently um, provided the attached proposal to extend our lease and to modify the terms of payment. I, I did ask our accountant to cal calculate the net present value of each option, and um, he's extremely busy right now with uh, some tax uh, tax filings that are going on to try to compare apples to apples comparison. Um, that being said, I think we can do some of our own off the cuff comparison. Our current lease payment is twenty six fifty three oh two and two cents a. Um, um, a month. I also include a copy of the le lease and the attachments. Um, the proposal actually is reducing the the amount um, by a significant amount, but also increasing the terms. And they also give a buy buyout option of the district receiving four hundred and twenty three thousand lump sum for a forty year uh, lease with no other payments uh, coming to the district. Uh, I did talk to our uh, legal counsel, and these types of agreements are, are, are proposals are very common with uh, for Verizon Wireless, and they are, as he, uh, I'm going to quote him, highly negotiable. <laughs> so um, I can. I, I obviously, I have many options. I can tell the Verizon Wireless that we are good with our current lease, or I could um, 
prepare a, a counteroffer or just say, listen, what you presented is not even close to what we want to consider. Please provide another proposal. It's, it's up to the board with uh, what uh, you would like me to do, and I will move forward with it. Comments, questions for Dave on this? Go ahead, Mike. So just so I understand this, so with, with the new amount that they're offering to pay, that's basically $1,000 less. Yes. Okay. <laughs> than, than what we are getting now on a monthly basis, so $12,000 a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why we would go with that. Right. And if my math's correct, the lump sum is about half of what it would be due to us in a monthly payment. My math's right. It'd be eight hundred thousand dollars versus four hundred twenty-three. Yes, received over that period of time. Right. But, yeah, and not including. Uh, um, uh, well, I'm definitely not in favor of giving doing a lump sum for the fact that I would want to have a little more say in the. If we give the entire uh, area. Um, we lose a little bit of uh, fortitude with influence on what's going on. So I wouldn't support that. I'm kind of fine with that current contract. Well, as, as I told them that the sanitary district is uh, perpetually 26 years old, so it, it never goes away. So a, an upfront payment like this may be interesting to myself personally but as, a, as the district, it really is not. So that was my initial opinion on that, so. So, you know, if it's uh, the pleasure of the board, I will tell them that, you know, what they pr uh, presented to us is not even something the district would like to consider if they wanted to we visit the numbers, they're more than likely to do it. If not, we're very happy with what we've got right now. I would support you doing that. Is I that a motion? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that could be. Do you want, I'll, the motion would be for what? I didn't know if there's any other discussion, but. I think it would. My uh, motion would be to uh, direct the superintendent to advise Verizon we're content with our current lease agreement and that they'd like to negotiate different numbers would consider it. Do we have a second? I say. Thank you, Mike. All right, now we can continue the discussion. Um, yeah, I would say we're happy with the current terms uh, unless they come back with a higher monthly rent. I don't think we should reconsider anything. Without, without Not reading, people, but we figure that out. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, it's been a while since I read the entire lease agreement, Dave. But is there anything in there at the end of the terms that require them to renegotiate this, or is this? I, I mean, I know we're up for a renewal, right? Yeah, there's automatic renewals, and I forget the every you know what the so duration every five of years, is. yeah, every it. five years, um, and our term, we go up 2% a year. Right. Um, already. Um, they, they wanted to change that to 10% every five years, which is actually ends up being less than what we're actually doing because you then Minus not compound, $1,000 off the top. Yeah, you're not compounding the interest. interest. Um, so, I, I don't know the exact answer to your question, so. Okay, fair enough. My motion stands. Anyone else have comments for Dave about this Verizon deal? Or this, I, I was a little offended when we saw this <laughs> come across our desk. A thousand dollars less per month. Yet yeah, Verizon's probably making more money off the tower now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't see a need to renegotiate at this time. Anyway, 
Thank you for that. Uh, I guess I need a vote on the motion. All in favor? Not opposed. Thank you. All right. I, I guess will we're take at care of that. And budget summary. The, um, I lost my notes. There they are. Um, four month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Do we have a motion to approve the four month budget summary? All right, Joe. Is that a second, Ruth? That's a second. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments on the budget? All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. All right. I'd ask for public comments, but we have no public left. Um, Where'd the dog go? <clears throat> He's sort of a trustee mascot. So I'll ask for trustee comments. We'll start on um, that side with Tony. Yeah, I thought it was a good meeting. Uh, yeah, some of the items they came up were, I thought were, were really good. Um, do you have your mic on? Oh, good. I do. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Um, we're not going to meet next month, right? Correct? So No. I just want to wish everybody a beginning of a good summer. Have a good time starting off the summer right. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Mike? Uh, yes, looks like it was another great month at the, at the district. Thank you for everyone's hard work. And um, as Tony alluded to, it's Memorial Day. Hope everyone has a great holiday. And uh, Dave, hope you have a good vacation. Yeah. Happy vacation. Ruth? Thank you for all the hard work that you all are doing. I'm sure it's been an adjustment, and I'm sure you've handled it very well and professionally. So enjoy your vacation, and uh, thank you very much. Cool. Joe? Dave, uh, hopefully you enjoy your well-deserved vacation. Um, hopefully uh, interviews go well for uh, um, your, op your lead operator. Um, look forward to hearing about that. I wish everybody a happy and safe Memorial Day and thank the staff for their ongoing work and uh, what I'm sure is still trying times. Cool. Thank you. I'll echo my trustee comments, fellow trustee comments, wishing everyone a safe and uh, blessed Memorial Day, uh, safe summer, fun summer. I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ruth. Second. Thank you, Tony. All in favor. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you all very much.